Welcome back to my channel. This is Mac, and I am working on a Rubicon today. We are putting on these little side fenders, and I couldn't really find any good videos on how to do so. So I will be doing that with you guys today. I got this one installed already, so I'm going to show you how to do the passenger side and all that good stuff. The directions are okay, but it doesn't really tell you how to do it. And there's no good videos on YouTube on how to do it. So I'm going to show you how to do the two front, well, the passenger side, and then we'll do the rears. So let's go ahead and get to that. A lot of this is really just pulling it off. There's these clips that go in here and you can firmly just pull this off and this will come off pretty easy. Now, this is the first part needs to come off is this outer fender. After you pull that piece off, there was obviously some uh, from the inner fender. There was um, three screws that went in here. You unscrew those. They were uh, 10 millimeter bolts. This piece, you are not gonna use any longer. This is all trash. Or save it for later. Then you have the inner fender that was um, posted underneath this. This tied into the upper piece and the inner fender. Um, again, those bolts and those clips held this in here. With this uh, Bushmaster uh, aluminum fender install, um, you need some big washers. I would suggest buying some. In my kit, I didn't have any. So in order to hold this fender up so you can mock it for cutting, um, you kind of need these to go in. Here, I'll show you. Where these access holes are right here, they go into the frame. You need to be able to clamp this up. This will give it a lot more rigidity whenever you um, are done and holds this fender up this fender liner up. Now, obviously you can buy the other fender wells. Uh, we decided to keep this one and just trim it. Most people are probably going to do that because of how much they cost. But just kind of wanted to show you this uh, real quick. So you'll just kind of put this up here. But I need two hands. So you have that point. There's two axis holes. There's one right here and one right here. Now that you have those two washers in and mounted, you need to use a pin to kind of mark out what is overhanging the fender. You really want this thing flush with the metal piece here. So you want to cut out the rest. So what I'll do is just on the inner fender, just mark right here, cut all this off. And then on the outside, I'll just run a marker along this outside right here and mark it. You'll notice that these big chunks of plastic where they mold right here, you're kind of cutting that off. So, okay, let's go ahead and mark that and cut it. Now that it's marked, go ahead and remove it, cut it out. Okay, pull it out. You just kind of shimmy this side up over. Maybe it's different because I have a. He has Fox shocks that have this big old thing on here. You may not have to wrestle it as much, but you can kind of see what I'm talking about. See how the shock comes out like that? I'm having to wrestle it over that. So if you have those type of shocks, you're probably doing the same thing I am. I'm just using a standard cutoff wheel. Again, you can kind of see my line. Going all the way up and down. Just on this side right here. And then that little piece at the end. That's what it looks like after you cut it. 
Um, using the cutting wheel actually burns a little bit, but it works. Now that you have this cut, you don't need this in here yet. That's kind of one of the last things you put back in there. But now that it's cut and it's flush, um, again, you want to make sure it's flush with uh, the fender so you can actually get all the rest of the pieces in here. So I don't need this right now, so I'm going to go ahead and put this away for right now. All right, in order to get these clips off, just use some pliers, pinch them in, they pop right out. Now that you got all those popped off, recommended you clean this area and then you tape it off because the next step is going and mounting the fender on here and um, pointing out where you're going to drill. These are, are some drill points you got to put on here. There's going to be like two right here and there's like another two or three down here uh, in order for the fender to fit. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, now we're gonna put some painter's tape on here. <sighs> Something like that. One of these holes that you have to drill is literally on this bevel right here. So, so you're aware. I went from the other side and drilled it. That was the best way for me to do it. All right, the next step is installing this inner brace. Now, you have to actually pop these clips in here. Please note how this is set up. The screw to come in this way, the angle is out this way. This way, when it goes in the inner fender, these screws go in here to screw in here to hook up the fender. These bolt areas are where it's going to mount underneath the car. The orientation, this is the marker point, goes underneath. You'll notice that the holes will line up here, here, and here. These three points, and then underneath there'll be three screws that go underneath. You'll use your stock bolts that you unhooked all the fender well stuff underneath here. And you'll go ahead and put them in now. So I'm going to get those bolts and put them in. Really, you're not tightening this all the way up. You're just going to keep it loose. But you want it snug so it's in its final resting place when you mount the fender. Now that that's installed, time to put the fender on. This is one of those aluminum fenders from them. And you'll see where this kind of lines up with this. That's really what's going to hold it for you for right now. You do want to put in two of the bolts to kind of set this in there. Put a couple of guide bolts in here. Don't need to nut it. put nuts on the back of them. But you want it kind of straight. Then you want to mark your holes. Um, over here where you need to cut and I'll show you that process in a second these are the supplied bolts that you get from it really nice actually hmm. and the size on this is a five millimeter it fits the best on these, so. Now that we gonna have it positioned, we got to mark the holes that we need to drill in it. So, uh, let's take you underneath here. You'll notice that these already have holes right here, 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 all the front have holes. You gotta drill one here, here, You'll notice when you put on the little brace, there was already holes back there and those little tabs. You got to drill a hole here, 
here, here, here, which I didn't even put tape on, and then back here. All right, so now that we got all those marked, gotta pull those back off. Use an eighth inch drill bit as your pilot hole. You'll drill all these out, and then you'll use a stepper bit to do the rest. Okay, now you use a stepper drill bit, step these up. Um, whatever the second notch is, that's what I did. It looks about the same size as these ones. I think they're three-eighths. Yeah, I think they're about three-eighths. Now that those are all drilled out, let's go ahead and fit the fender back in. You will need to put this in. This is a support brace. You do want these facing outwards, so with the curve, because there's a bolt that goes in between this. Do not put it like this facing out, like this. It'll go through the two holes that you drilled out right here. It sits in there pretty nicely. See how it goes in there? Now what we have to do is we gotta mark this side right here and drill these holes. Best way to do it is use a 3 8 drill bit, go straight from here all the way through here. Mark these holes and then Drill through here. Now that you have that drilled out, you want to go ahead and bolt this in on the back side. The nuts and uh, you'll use. They only came with four of these different type right here. These two are the ones that go for this brace on the inside, and you use just the regular nuts on them. It's a 14 millimeter um, socket that goes on here. You do not want to tighten these yet, not until you get the fender on there all the way, and then you tighten it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull off the tape. Now that I have all my holes, now it's time to loosely install this um, on here. And I mean loosely, just work your way around it, install it, you start with the top five, then you do these section right here, then work all the way down here. Um, do not tighten them all the way down, you want to loosely install it and get it seated in there, okay? I always start with the long bolts, there's going to be long and short ones. The areas you use the short ones is when it's just sheet metal or the fender and a nut um, on the back side. So rule of thumb, use the short ones for those only. I don't know the exact amount, but uh, it, it'll work itself out in there. Okay, after you have them all loosely in, uh, your next objective is to start tightening them in. Um, you start from this end, and you go all the way down to the bottom. And then you will tighten the, the support bracket, the second one. Then you'll tighten the top one. You'll put the inner fender in. And then you'll have these inner fender uh, holders put on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. The last one at the very bottom here, you are going to have to use an Allen wrench for. Um, just there's not a lot of room to work in there. I'm kind of show it to you. That one on the back there. All right, now that all 12 of those are in there, this thing is solid. Um, next steps are get the inner fender in 
bolt that up and then we got to put these two brackets on these two brackets actually hold the inner fender on um, tightly so we'll go ahead and do that right now all right got the inner fender right here we're gonna uh, finagle it in here now Now that I got the inner fender in here, I need to go ahead and put these two braces on here that hold the fender in here so it doesn't move around. They look like this. Okay. This side goes on the fender, the big slotted side. This is where you drill the hole into the fender or the liner itself. So they go right here and right here. They go on the inside, like so, inside, and they bolt right in using these. Okay, so bolt this in here, get the fender on the other side of it, get it in the position you want it, make sure that you have this stud through here, and these are lining up. And you kind of want to pull this over. And then you drill this hole right through here. All right, now that I have these installed right here, there's two of them, fenders on all the way. Last thing we have to do is hook up the little marker light by cutting this off. So I'll show you that. You cut this off, you put the new ends on, you put the new light on. All right, let's go ahead and get that done. All right, black and black, white and green on the red. So connect them together like so, okay? The trick to getting this light in this hole is to take this rubber grommet off, stick it in here, Get it all wet. You can use Windex, spit, whatever. Run the wires through, and then push this bad boy in. Like so. Then connect these. and then I will uh, tape it all up. So both fenders are on. Both of them have the marker lights in. The window or the, uh, the wheel wells in. I would say the most complex part of this whole thing is the wheel well. Like I said, they do have some aftermarket ones you can buy, but they're super expensive. I'd say the easiest part is putting the fender on and then the wheel well is a pain in the butt. So it takes up most of your time. The lights are super easy to do. They give you all the stuff to do it. They fit in really nice and they work right out the box. So anyway, the next video, I'm going to do the rears. Um, but yeah, let's uh, look at the front of this. Yeah. Uh, this Jeep probably has everything done to it right now. They just need the, the rears to put on there. Anyway, next video, I'll show you how to do the rears. Um, thanks for viewing. I'll see you next time.